all right, I've discerned why Lumina's managed to survive the crisis, but that doesn't imply the issue is resolved. On the contrary, the actual work lies ahead. So, Dagrel has defected and is currently advancing. I expect we'll make contact with him within a week at the latest. I relayed the truth to Luminous. I explained that Fen, Dagrul's brother, had influenced him, transforming him into a different person. I hadn't seen him in person and only learned about it from Ultima's report. But from a distance, Dagrul appeared shrouded in a sinister aura. The army of giants following him also exuded an ominous vibe, so I anticipated a fierce battle when the time came. Jahl was the opening act, and Dagrul was the main event. They were advancing on foot but were making swift progress through the desert of death, suggesting they would reach us soon. Frankly, Dagrul's defection was a blow. I had considered it as a possibility, but facing the reality was quite a headache. Well, Dagrul and I have never gotten along. It's not just due to conflicting interests, but also because Dagrul was on good terms with the Divine Ancestor. Wait, you mean the discord with Dagrul is also related to the Divine Ancestor? Yes, though that matter is long in the past. It seemed to be around the time Dagrul was labeled an evil god. That's why Luminas didn't seem to be too concerned. But if that were the case, it felt like Dagrul was settling an old grudge now. So, it's not surprising that we're heading into a direct war with him. That said, I believe Dagrul was exceptionally strong. At that level, even I might struggle with him. That's not possible. That's what I think, but Seal San seemed to hold a different opinion. Well, that's okay, I won't argue about it here. I don't want to underestimate the enemy and lose, so I must assume the threat level is high and plan accordingly. Understood. I'm glad you agree. Now, let's discuss our next steps. In terms of geopolitics, the Holy Empire of Lubelius was crucial for defending the western part of the country. If it fell, the enemy would gain a foothold in the western nations, leading to chaos. The angelic army could fly, making it impossible to intercept them at any point. Thankfully, the giant army was on foot. They were much faster than regular humans, averaging 30 kilometers per hour, possibly due to some kind of legion magic. This speed was unimaginable for a typical army, but it was still better than facing an aerial attack. However, I had been monitoring them with the Argus spell and should detect any changes. It's easy to deceive the surveillance magic Argus. If the enemy is cautious, they might have countermeasures. That's correct. Argus is a magic that provides real-time surveillance of an area, and there's no way to confirm if the scene has been tampered with. In any case, I had arrived in time and wanted to ensure I was perfectly positioned to intercept Dagrul's army. So, what could we afford? If they maintain their current marching speed, Dagrul's army will arrive in at least four days. Hinata and the others should return soon, but it might coincide with the decisive battle. Well, in the worst-case scenario, I should recall Hinata immediately. I rushed out of Ingratia, leaving the cleanup of the royal capital to them. They also have to escort important dignitaries from various countries, so it'll be challenging until the handover is complete. Yeah, you're right. Inada represents the Western Holy Church, so it's not too much to ask. I've brought my subordinate Gadra with me and he should be discussing defense with Adalman by now. He's not as capable as Hinata, but he's reliable, so you don't need to worry that much. You're too carefree. It's probably because you don't grasp the gravity of Dagrul that you can speak so casually. Well, I do think Dagrul is dangerous. It's just that Seal San seems confident in victory, so I've been more relaxed. I don't like being called carefree, but arguing with her would be unwise. I swallowed my complaints maturely and moved on to the next topic before receiving more criticism setting that aside, let's assess our forces. Let me be frank, how many surmounters do we have? We have seven with the most potential. The Demon Lord's army, entrusted to my shadows, established a ruling system of seven great nobles, with Louis as the supreme king. Gunther here is also one of the divine ancestor's disciples. In a way, he and I are like siblings. I'm deeply honored by your words. Then far behind Luminous Sama. According to Ultima's information, Dagrul's force, the Chain Titan army, consists of 30,000 giant warriors. Their average strength is about B plus rank, with nearly 1,000 elite warriors at over a rank. That's quite impressive. Dagrul's strength was a mystery. It would be risky to underestimate him, given his past battles with Veldora. Sealsan seemed sure I would win, but I couldn't predict the future. I needed to prepare for all scenarios. If Luminous were to battle Dagrul, I wasn't sure who would win. Luminous possessed the ultimate skill of the Deadly Sin series, so she wouldn't be easily defeated. But it was best to avoid a leader-versus-leader confrontation. With me present, there was no need to worry. 
but we had to consider the strength of our lieutenants in this situation. Luminas and Dagral were among the most powerful demon lords, with similar overall strength. That's likely why Dagral hadn't made hasty moves. But now, the strength of their subordinates and executives would determine the victor. On Luminas's side, there were Gunther San, Louis, and the Seven Nobles. And of course, Dagral had formidable allies as well. Not to mention Dagral's younger brothers, Fen and Glassword. Some were considered equivalent to demon lord seeds, though one step below million-class beings. They were the five warrior generals, the strongest senior fighters in the Chain Titan army. The famous representative of this group was, it's troublesome that Fen has returned. Dagrul will revert to the ancient evil god, and the four-armed Bessara will awaken. Isn't that natural? We demon lords have been around since ancient times, gathering power and taking in strong individuals. Karian and Frey were impressive as new demon lords. In that sense, you're an anomaly. How did you manage to gather so many million class members in such a short time? I'd like to know your secret. Asking me how it happened. I don't understand it either, so I can't provide an answer. Continuing this conversation seemed inconvenient, so I decided to ask Luminas about something that had been bothering me for a while, setting aside that topic. By the way, you seem well informed about Dagrul's faction. Did you know about Fen, Luminous? Of course, he was already sealed by the time I was born, but traces of the damage remained. The divine ancestor used to tell me the story of those days with great pleasure. Besides, it's because of Fen that the divine ancestor created Kasara and Basara, the siblings. Kasara and Basara were the progenitors of giants, created by the divine ancestor based on Dagrul and the true giants. Born as twins, they had fierce quarrels over who was the older sibling, causing considerable damage at the time. Luminas argued that ultimately, the source of all the disasters could be traced back to the divine ancestor. Peace prevailed when Kasara and Basara fought Dagrul, lost, and became his disciples. Indeed, poison was used to conquer poison, but it wasn't fun to see Dagrul's power grow. 